Here's one more optional example on testing independence of a set of vectors. Suppose we have this set of four vectors in R3. We talked about, right off the bat, if the question is simply, are these four columns independent? The answer has to be no. Any four vectors in R3 are going to be dependent. And the proof, uh, using our technology, is that we know whatever happens with the reduction process that I'm about to do, there can be at most three pivots, because there's only three rows, and so there must be a free column. Now again, remember that we could put zeros on the end of this to make the augmented matrix, and think of it as solving AX equals zero, but we want to get beyond that because it's a little bit inefficient. And what we want to do is move to the, the more sophisticated theorem, which says not only if you just do row reduction on this, not only does that tell you whether they're all independent, of course we know the answer already, the answer is no, it tells you easily which one, which subsets of them are, are independent and what the dependence relationships are. So, let's just crank out the reduction process. I'm going to add three times the top to the bottom, and I'm going to get minus two, eight, minus four, Now I'm going to get I'm going to take half of this actually I probably could have scaled that to make a, a one pivot anyway. I'm going to take half of that and add it to the to the bottom row. Ah, that's interesting. And um one. Okay, let's make the pivots one. Okay. Now, if I just want to answer certain kinds of questions, um, like which ones are independent or dependent, I don't actually have to go any further. Um, what we see is that these three columns, column one, two, and four, those are independent of each other. If I just cover this up, those are independent because there's three, those are pivot columns. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but if I put this one in, it's going to be a combination of the others, because it's a free column. Now, exactly how to do that combination, um, that's where you want to go to the completely reduced form. So, let's go ahead and do that. Save paper by putting it over here. I'm going to go from the bottom. Now, I can use that one to kill everything above it. And the great thing about 0, 0, 0, 001 is that it doesn't change anything else. I don't have to do any calculations at all. And now I'm almost done. Bottom is locked in. It's in reduced form. This is as good as it's going to get. And then I just need to kill that 3. I'm going to add 3 times the second row to the top row. And so 3 plus minus 12 is minus 9, 0. Okay, so hopefully I didn't do any, make any mistakes in the calculations. And what this says is, let's call these, let's call it, give a name to, to our vectors. Let's say this is u1, u2, u3, and u4. I'd like to know exactly what the relationships are among those vectors, those columns. And it turns out that this is the big theorem, is that if I call these like v1, v2, v3 and v4. These are different vectors, but what they have in common with the u's is they have the same dependency relationships. Another way to say that, of course, remember, is that if I'm if I ask for solutions of this kind of equation, a homogeneous equation, the x's that satisfy this are the same as the x's that would satisfy it with this matrix. That's the basic thing about row reduction. So, um, these coefficients that would pair these off against each other and make zero are the same ones that would work for you. So, we can now see that v3 is equal to minus 9v1 minus 4v2. Or if we like to write it in that symmetric way that's kind of preferred, um, the sum of all these 
is equal to zero. And we could put in a plus zero v4, but it would be uh, extra, you know, would be redundant. We don't really need to do that. Oh, it's getting kind of tilted, huh? Okay. So that's one relationship among these vectors. And what that tells us is not only are they all four dependent, in fact, the first, uh, the third one is dependent on the other two. This is like a lot of the examples we've, we've been getting where, um, in fact, three of these things turned out to be uh, coplanar. And uh, so this is, that's what these are, this, these coefficients are saying, that if I put these three vectors together, then I'm going to be able to get a dependency relationship that says this can be built out of these two. So, um, the other thing I can use this for, oh, let's, let's do one more. So that says these three vectors together are dependent, because if I cover that up, that only has two pivots. Now notice, it, it had to have a row of zeros for that to happen. If I have a three by three matrix, typically there's going to be a pivot in every column, because there's typically going to be a pivot in every row. But here this is a, this is a bit special, it's because those three are actually coplanar. Um, these three are independent. These three are independent. That, that now gets promoted to being a pivot. And these three, these aren't in the echelon form anymore, um, but they, those three are going to be independent as well. So it answers all those questions in as efficient a form as possible. Um, all right, that's actually a good place to stop.